Hello again, everybody, and welcome to week 12 of the high school football season here on uh, Mirror TV on YouTube and public access. Uh, all good games this week, folks. Championship games, uh, big-time playoff games. I am joined once again by Mike Boyden and Andy Stein. We're getting right to it. We're not even going to talk about the stuff that nobody sent us. Like, boy, would we love to have a Bellwood Anna's football helmet. Love it. I hope we get another chance to ask for a Bellwood Anna's football helmet. Because we could have put it out there with the Cambria Heights element. But the first game we're going to look at here right off the bat, the Class 5A Championship, the District 6, 8, 9, 10 playoffs. Two boys at Hollisburg, a rematch. Uh, some interesting sidebars in this game, too, because of stuff going on. They've already played each other. There's no more year can people prep to work and worry about. Uh, what do you think about Hollisburg's chances in this one? Well, uh, they did win this game. They did win this game a couple weeks ago. Uh, but the thing is, is um, Homer said that they got lucky in some of those, uh, got some turnovers. Um, they took care of, like, the, they got some scores late there. So it was the, the game. I think Hollandaysburg won by a couple touchdowns, but it was a little bit closer than the final score. So uh, they have a really good quarterback. They have really good receivers. Um, this is going to be on the turf at Hollidaysburg there. I mean, I could see this being a high-scoring game. No, as you say, I had a dad tell me, too, that and he's a Hollidaysburg dad, told me that Dubois had two touchdowns called back, which I'm sorry, who covered? Is that Todd covered? Todd, everyone covered that game for us? Yeah. I can't yeah, remember, but this fact is, yeah. and you sat there and said about you know, I thought, geez, that game, maybe it was a little closer than than uh, the final score indicated. But, yeah, Hollidaysburg's got to be aware of that offense they have up there. I'm curious. Because the winner of that game gets the winner of a Whitfield game, which I believe is Upper St. Clair and Ben Hills. How do you keep Hollisburg from not looking past the fact that we beat this team? Well, I, I think, think yeah, I think you got to just say, you know, the task in front, yeah, the task in front of you for the playoffs. I think it should go. I think it should go like that for everyone. And uh, I remember Mike told me about this uh, the other day when he contacted Homer about this game. Uh, Homer and Homer and. Uh, I think what's his name? Two boys, T.J. T.J. Winger, yeah, his his son was Trey. I almost said Trey. T.J. Winger, and these this team is these are going to be two clear two clear vote county coaches. Uh, obviously Homer's from my hometown of Alamo Valley. T.J. Winger is from uh, Kerwinsville. Yeah, yeah. A lot of you people, a lot of people around here remember me from my days at the Herald uh, in Tyrone. I even before that, I was working in Dubois. I used to coach. TJ when, when he was a coach for Little League, so that's been that's been. Are you that old? I am that old. That means I could have coached his grandkids. His son, then. his son is the quarterback at Dubois now. His son was a very good baseball player from what I remember. And from what I from what I understand, he's pretty good at football too. So. Well, hey, good segue because speaking of old, currently the oldest coach in Blair County is coaching at Tyrone now. Tyrone, the number three seed at Penn Cambria, the number one seed. I already had two people this week ask me, "How's Tyrone going to beat them?" How is Tyrone going to beat them? I'll ask you before I have to put my two cents in. Well, Tyrone's going to have to beat them by playing the way they have for this uh, winning streak they've been on ever since, um, you know, losing uh, in the middle of the season there. They have turned things around, and the biggest key has been Ashton Walks uh, keeping hold of the ball. Uh, like early in the season, I was doing the high school football stats, and I think he had like twelve interceptions, and it was that was in like the first like five or six games, and it was like he had an adjustment period there because he's had some receivers like Ross Gamp over the years where you could just kind of throw it up and the guy would come down. Looks like Tim. So he kind of had to adjust and become a more accurate passer and somebody that was not going to make these turnovers. And since he's done that. Um, he's obviously leading the mirrors coverage area in passing, and he's done such a good job now that he's kind of become a threat by even not even having to throw the ball. Like last week against Four Hills, they did not pass one time in the second half. But Justin Myers, Four Hills, he's telling me, "Hey, we're not letting National Walk beat us." So they, you know, stacked up the to to guard against the pass. Meanwhile, Seth Hoover runs for 250 yards, and he's had a huge second half of the season because the line has gotten better, 
And teams are just really afraid of Tyrone being able to throw the ball because Trent Adams and Eli Woomer, remember, Eli Woomer did not play in that Bellwood game that they lost. Right. So uh, this is a, this is a, these are these are two really good receivers. Uh, and they got a lot of other guys, too, that like have like about 10, 15 catches or so that he can spread out the, all the ball to. Well, I, I was talking to my nephew this week, Johnny Frank, and I was sitting there saying about what were you, and I know my brother said the same, is the offensive defense line of Penn Camry because of how big they are. Yeah. If you're a smaller line, you, you've been on the line. How do you coach a smaller line? To be a bigger yeah, line. I wouldn't know anything about that because I was always one of the biggest guys on my team. Not always. I wasn't always the biggest. Well, who did you have trouble with most as a defense lineman? A small? Uh, I, uh, I, I used to tell people all the time, it's like, especially in wrestling, I had trouble with smaller guys. I mean, when you're when you're a smaller guy, you want to rely on your speed and everything. And uh, you're, you're obviously not going to outpower those uh, the bigger guys the, the way like 275, 280, like I did when I was in high school. But uh one of the guys that Tyron really has to look out for, uh, especially for Penn Cambridge's defense, I think, is Derek Height. Yeah. Uh, guys, he's a right. returning All State player, and he is a he's going to VMI to play football. Mm -hmm. uh, he's an extremely tough kid. Uh, that's going to be a guy that is roaming in the middle of the field there that you know can hurt Tyron for sure in this game. Him. Uh, our next year, we got uh, Bell Ennis, number five seed, at Cambridge's number one seed, two A semifinals. Uh, even though Cambridge's undefeated and a heck of a comeback last week, because when we heard that score again, I was talking about it yeah. in the office, yeah. we were like, oh my gosh. It was 14 like, 3 at It's not like that. 17 3 at one Yeah, they three, came yeah. back, so kudos to them. But I tell you what, Bell uh without any Cambridge Heights people being offended because they've been so nice to us. I took Bellwood Annis, but what does Bellwood Annis have to do to win this game, Mike? Well, it's, this game is pretty interesting to me because I think it's two teams that are pretty similar. Like, both teams like to use a lot of different players. Um, they get contributions from a lot of different guys. And both of these quarterbacks, Holden Schreier and Isaac Wiley, they have gotten so much better as they have been, um, you know, getting experience, you know. But uh, if you remember, Cambria Heights had Ty Stockley a couple of years ago, and he really run, ran the ball well. They didn't throw the ball very much, but Stockley got hurt, and, you know, Wheeling came in, and this kid uh, started, he, he had some long passes that season, and he's developed more, and now uh, Cambria Heights has that, like, hey, you better watch it or they might throw a 60 yard pass on you where they didn't have that in the past. It was always just hand camera edge, run, run, run. And Bellwood too. Whereas this year, Holden Schreier, he can, he can light you up for he even got uh, BG uh, on a pass with Ethan Shawley, I think for like 70 yards in that game. So, I mean, Bellwood and, and Heights are very similar tracks here. And it'll be, this is a really interesting game. The last time they played was in the playoffs it was in Bellwood in 2019, and Bellwood came away with a 15-8 to eight win. So. And again, you can comment on this part here, because whenever Bellwood decided to leave the ICC, I can remember listening to a school board meeting here at the Mirror on YouTube, because news was listening to it, and people were upset because they were used to 10-0 all the oh, time. Yeah, and yeah. this is exactly why a lot of people could be picking Bellwood, because playing in that Laurel Islands, has helped yeah. them a lot. In a, in a lot of ways, I think last year, you know, taking their lumps like they did last year. What did they go two and eight last year? Yeah. Uh, you know, in a lot of ways, I think that helped them. And you know, they're they're seeing the benefits of it all this year. They, uh, you know, they they played in a really tough Laura Highlands. Didn't play, um, you know, didn't play the ICC schedule, and it, it, it's helped them. And you know, for that reason, I'm picking. Uh, I don't want to be Cambridge Heights, too. I took both. I'm curious because you see him. Is Bellwood's line, I got to think, I know my brother said their line's big. It's not like Cambridge Heights is bigger than them either, huh? No. They're about the same size. Yeah, but, and Bellwood is also very experienced on their line, but so is Cambridge Heights. Or if you remember, Cambridge Heights last year won their first ever district championship. They went to the state playoffs for the first time, and they returned to almost everybody from that That's team. Cool. So this yeah. team has lots of playoff experience, too. Now, it was in 1A last year, but... They came back, they won that game against McCourt Carroll last week, and if you remember, 
uh, Bellwood barely beat McCourt Carroll yeah. in the crossover game. So, I mean, it's not like Bellwood is just going to come in and like steamroll Cambria Heights here or anything like yeah. that. I mean, they both have who's got this played game? really close game. I I think it's uh, me. Oh, hey. <laughs> I said to her, why am I not covering this game? Because I'm in the office. <laughs> he and I like the office. We do. Uh, our next game, Berlin Brothers Valley at Bedford. The District 5 play a 2 8 championship at Winter High School. And we don't get to talk a lot about Bedford, but I know you know a lot about Bedford. But this should be a good game, even though I always feel like Bedford's a bigger school than Berlin, but they're not. But uh, Berlin has a chance in this game. Yeah, for sure. Berlin has, has done well. I mean, they... They, they were going to want to win this one for their coach. I just yeah, coach, yeah, yeah. coach Doug Ball's uh, stepping down at the end of the season. He's been there for a long time. He's built a really good program. And when you think of Berlin, maybe you might think smaller school, but they, if, yeah, you, yeah. if you think about it, they're in a co-op with Rockwood. Okay. So they actually get a pretty uh, sizable yeah. contribution from that school. And it's, it's, it's considered like one of the bigger schools with the wet, with the, um, in the Westpac previously and now in the ICC, um, with the addition of the Rockwood kids there. So they have a, and, and football is just a huge thing in Berlin as well. So, I mean, this is, this is, uh, you know, a matchup of two programs that have had a lot of success over the last decade. I'm curious if you ever got to play a game where you knew that coach was his last, because I got to think that's, I mean, if you're looking for any kind of, not that we're gambling or betting, but if you're, you're looking, looking for something oh, on who I you was picking everything, I mean, Berlin playing for their coach who they know is going out, I got to think that's some kind of Yeah, advantage. and I think, yeah, there's, there's a little bit of an advantage there. And I remember, you know, wanting to win for, uh, for Coach Camberg in my, my junior year because uh, Howie Camberg was going to step down after my junior year. So he'd yeah. been there forever. Right? Yeah, he'd been there for 20-some years, I think. Like it's a, He was there a long time, so I'm sure Berlin's going to have a little bit extra motivation. But we said this before, um, you know, just like Bellwood, Bedford really had good. a bad season last year, and they fought back to get to this district championship. They just avenged a loss to Chestnut Ridge. And this would mean a lot to them, too, to win this game. And Bedford's playing Laurel Island's teams, and Berlin is playing and the ICC, ICC teams, yeah. and that could be a difference. Uh, here's one coming up. Uh, this one's Saturday night by itself. Uh, Plainsburg Kimmel, the five seed, the underdog of underdogs, I'll say, yeah. versus Bishop Guilford, the one seed. They're going to play that Iger Stadium Saturday night. Uh, Michael BG's on a roll right now. I mean, what's Plainsburg Kimmel? Maybe like they. Catch BG, maybe not taking them serious enough or taking them for here, and maybe they can sneak that way in. I mean, that, what's your thoughts on this one? Well, in the famous words of uh, Christopher Walken, more cowbell. <laughs> uh, uh, the uh, Clay, you know, the game, for the, the story, he's going to tell it. Claysburg uh, took some cowbells up to uh, Glendale last week, and there was some controversy on whether they were allowed. They were allowed. Um, I was actually at my covering my game trying to text with uh, Ralph Sari, the football chairman. He's talking about how uh, whistles are not allowed, but any other noisemakers at outside events are um, okay. I think the confusion there probably came from during um, uh, indoor events. So it's a little different on noisemakers. But anyway... Um, you write that I, down. I'm you sure write that, that there will be some galbells at this game. Um, the question is, will it matter? The the BG is like I said that since they lost Ben Cambry, that could have been the worst thing that happened to the rest of the one A school <laughs> because they're <laughs> they're bad. They're, they are not happy. They want to do well, and you know the other thing is is they're they they take everybody's top shot because. It's like the Super Bowl. I mean, like when you're at Mo Valley playing, like, and you got if you got a chance to play BG, that would probably feel like the Super Bowl to you. Uh, right? Or you want to knock them off? Yeah, yeah. But uh, Claysburg Kimmel, what kind of a uh, pep talk do you give them if you're Coach Cassick? Go out and go out and play the game. <laughs> they uh, they they tie their shoes just the same way you do. I think that's the uh, I think that's the number one message for a team that you know may, might have some aspirations of winning a state championship. It's you know. Have fun out there. And I do. I'd love to know what the over-under for this game would be. Again, know that we're not... We do not gamble on high school sports. But that's just... 
It since, was it was nice to see Mark Latieri play last week, although I, I heard he's not quite a hundred percent. Um it, it would be nice to see Claysburg at least at full strength in this game. Um they do have talent. They they have two one thousand yard rushers. And if you have a team with two thousand one yard two one thousand yard rushers, you're someone to be reckoned with. And um, you know, BG's gonna have to account for that. Uh, our last game we're gonna look at uh a rematch from this year earlier. Northern Bedford, the number two seed, that uh, win for the number one seed is a District 5 championship Saturday night at Somerset, and to which I only came out and said I picked Northern Bedford because I could have sworn they'd already played each other twice this year. I <laughs> think <laughs> like, he's like going, no, they played each other twice last year, oh, yeah. counting the playoff game, but I did. I know Winter beat them up pretty good, but I believe in Gary Black and I really need Northern Bedford to win so I can get out of last place. Again, not encouraging uh, gambling, but does Northern Bedford, Northern Bedford has a chance, right, regardless of that last game, or is this a really tall pass for them? Hey, Winver's playing good over the past few weeks, but I will tell you this stat. Yeah. Um, this is not the stat of the week, but this is a pretty good stat. That's how good the stat of the week is going to be if he's offering this <laughs> one right now. I, I will say this. that I talked to Coach Macrohall from, from Winbrook. The Weed Love gave us a helmet. And they, you know, have had a great season. They're the number one seed. They beat Northern Bet for 35-6 to six earlier in the season. But throughout this year, they've actually had a negative turnover ratio. So they've turned the ball over more than they've forced turnovers, which is hard to believe when you get high school football when you have such a good record and to have that. And he said it's concerned them all year. So that's something that they have had a tendency to do is turn the ball over. And if Northern Bedford can get those turnovers, that could really turn this game around, as you know, in the playoffs. And again, I always ask you this because you're the player. You're Winberg. You're going on that field saying that you beat this team 35-6. So I don't care yeah. what coach sits there and preaches you all week. A 17, and 16, 18-year-old kid is in there going, we beat this team 35 six. Gary yeah. Black's got to be counting on that. I'm sure he, I'm sure he isn't, but and I think they also got to remember what you did in the regular season means absolutely nothing in the playoffs, too. But, but that is probably in the back of their minds, and we'll say that. Okay, we're headed down the stretch now, the final stretch of the show. We're going to go with Andy's line of the week and then Mike's down of the week. And you go first. Who impressed you last week? It's ahead. Short steps. Short steps are better than long steps. Well, well, it's not just last week, but it's been BG for all season. Um, and you know, I you look at five hundred and what was it? Five hundred and thirteen total yards, and I believe it was over three hundred passing. And uh, Lyman, they still have to pass block too. It's like BG. I did not forget you. Know, forget about you. You've been impressive all season. But I wanted to save you until playoffs. So. Uh, 49 nothing whenever Juniata Valley. Um, yeah, that 1A bracket is, yeah, good luck to the rest of 1A field. I'll say that. Left tackle, Joe Eckenrode, left guard, Hayden Osgood, center, Trenton, Trenton Murphy, right guard, Rocco Sakati. Kishadi, Kishadi. Kishadi, yeah. yeah, sorry about that. Oh, yeah, oh, you got one up. Right tackle, Declan Peter Peterson, and tight end, Jake Kessel. Good and, luck. Yeah, and what? I think only one of them is a senior. I believe I so. guess. Oh, yeah. my God. Tell me that's not going to be impressive the next yeah. day. Joe, right. Joe, again, Mike, what, do you have, what is the really impressive stat that you say for this portion of our show? It, it's actually pretty simple. Um, I mean, this this has uh, just been a really special time up at Penn Cambry the last few years. I mean, if you remember two years ago, they won their – they made it to the – Final four in high school boys basketball, led by Garrett Harold, and now his bro- younger brother Gavin Harold has a chance to lead this to, to make more history at the school where they could win their first ever district championship. Ben Cambry has never won a district championship in high school football, which is kind of hard to believe because they've been so good, especially recently. Um, but they have talked about this all season. They have said the job's not done, the job's not done. Well, this is their chance to have the job get done. And what better team to do it against? I know they probably wanted to play Central. They got to had to play them last week because that's the team that's knocked them off. But if you think about it, um, this this group that's seniors now, when they were freshmen, uh, they, lo- they uh, lost to Tyrone in the semifinals down at Tyrone. So 
uh, you know, and Tyrone's kind of been the staple for um, high school football in this classification, the 2A, 3A classification, as far as like, you know, running in the States. John Franco has had as much history and success as anybody in the playoffs. And if you do it against them, you really make some history. So good luck to Penn Cambria this year, as they at this week, as they go for number one, the first ever district championship and look to get a trophy in that trophy case for the first time that has a football on it. And, and just lots of good guys up there. I mean, I go back to covering Penn Cambria in the late 80s when Rick Hatch was their coach. And they had a kid named Ray Riggleman on their offensive line. Now Ray Riggleman's kids are my kids' ages, and we talk about that. And then just all the years they've had different coaches. Ernie Thatcher, uh, Jason, was it Jason Grassy? Yeah. Jason Grassy, one of the good guys there. It's like, and I mean, I got to pick my brother because I love my brother. And even though my mother's in heaven, I still think she would come down and yell at me if I did think Ben Cambria. Could you, but, imagine, yeah. could you imagine a pair of brothers having a better, high, better two better high school careers than the Harold brothers? I mean, yeah, really. Yeah. Even unbelievable. Mom and dad, must have, like, they should go to I am kids and see if they're going to be good at That's it. the other thing is when, when well, I said about watch out for height, you know, whenever, if he puts any, if Walk throws any passes up for grabs, like Garrett Harold may be able to out jump anybody yeah. on that field. Yeah. So, uh, and then our final Gavin Harris. Gavin. Our final two, uh, our final thing here, our cool name segment. I want to know what's the name of the game. In this week's cool name segment, Ray Eckenrode, who's a big fan of our show, uh, used to be the uh, managing editor here, used to be in sports, used to be the general manager here. He sent me an email and he goes, Scott, I don't know if you came across this name from Bishop McCord, he goes, but if you didn't, you could use it in your cool names. And I kind of thought, I'll check it out and everything. But I looked. I hadn't picked anybody from the court carol. So for Ray Eckenrode, see if you people email us, you can get your name on the show. So from the court carol, their quarterback, he's listed quarterback on offense, athlete on defense. He's a sophomore. His name is Bentley Bainey. Bentley Bainey. I think he should be playing croquet or lacrosse or maybe water polo. But he's not. He's a football player. His name is Bentley Bainey. Is that who Buck's dog's name is? Yeah, our boss, Buck Frank, has a dog named Bentley. But are you I, I'm not done with my name. I know, I know. But it was, and then our last name is the one I love, West Branch. This guy sounds like he should be in a mobster movie, not because I'm wearing my, my Marlon Brando Godfather t-shirt, but there's a kid from West Branch named Frankie Leskovansky. Yeah. Frankie Leskovansky. And I just think... There are kids named Frankie, and they're usually be Frank. Isn't that a Mo Franklin last? Is that? I knew. I was just saying before we went on here. I knew a girl named Mustang Nancy in high school. So I'm guessing. I'm guessing it's a red nephew or something. Yes, Frankie, Leskovansky, Leskovansky, and Ben Lee. In fact, if you go back to the beginning of your Dijuvenski was over. Did you had Dijuvenski Leskovansky? Oh, yeah. what was the first name? What was the first name you get for this week? Oh, Bentley, Bentley Bainey. I hear he has a real drive to win. Bentley drive. There you go, Dan. Wah, wah. That was good. This is being filmed oh. late at night, so we're just gonna okay that one. Oh, I'm so, former Colt Albert Bentley. Wasn't there an Albert? Bentley? Bentley. Bentley. You're actually getting worse. He's a running back, the country yeah. singer. Yeah, the Bentley. I just love I like people. Bentley. With first names that sound like last names. That Anyways, I digress. That That's going to do it here because all four of us are really tired. Nice. I think it's like 1 o'clock in the morning already when we're, we're shooting this. But for Mike Boyden, Andy Stein, Dan Eisenberg behind the camera, we will be back next week for sure because we know we're going to have at least two teams at least. In, cause, three. Yeah, three teams because we have several locals playing each other. Yeah. But that's going to do it. It'll be what, week 13 next week? Mm-hmm. Week 13, everybody. Watch us, like us, subscribe to us. Did I forget anything else? No, you're good. Yeah, we're good. Good night, everybody.